Hey, YouTube, what's up? It's Ryan. We're doing a, a, a Southern Charm recap today, plus a couple, couple pop culture stories. I'm just going to hit record for the actual podcast. Go listen to it. It's called So Bad It's Good on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that stuff, or you can just watch here. Here we go. Welcome to an all new episode of So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey. This is Ryan. This is your Tuesday episode, I believe. Listen, the, it, 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 I don't, it, it feels like. It has been just one long continuous week. I worked through the weekend, which I usually get to take a break, but I worked throughout the weekend. So I don't, you know, it. it's the last two weeks have felt like one long week. And then if you add the pandemic on top of that, it's felt like one long week for the last three, <laughs> three, three years. My good God. How's everybody doing out there? <laughs> so today we're going to do a Southern Charm recap. Uh, I also have Mary Payne from Pink Shade, which I'll be airing this week as well. I was debating on putting Mary out on Tuesday. If you haven't listened to Pink Shade, you should. It's a great podcast. Uh, but I think because I have so many recaps, because I'm going to be doing a recap of Salt Lake, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City returns this week. And I got to tell you, it's 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 good. I really, really liked the first episode, so I cannot wait to talk about it. Remember the Kardashians we cover now exclusively over on the Patreon, as well as Selling the OC if you want to party with us over there. Uh, and then, uh, of course, Beverly Hills Friday. It is just a busy week. I am beat, you guys. I don't know. Yeah, I think I got good sleep, but I am beat. Do you ever have those days where you get to the end and you're like, how? I don't even have kids. What the hell am I complaining about? My good God. Well, I hope you have had a easy re-entry to the week. And let's let's cover a couple of news stories, shall we? Um, this actually kind of warmed my heart. And this is this is long past due. I've got big news for everybody out there that has been wondering what has happened to Erica Jane's Pasadena mansion. Remember in this past week's episode, she had a thoughtful conversation like Yes, I drove. I drove to Pasadena. I'm at a jail. I took a shit in the driveway. So that house has been on the market for it feels like a very, very long time. And we finally got word that the house, this is great, has finally, finally been sold. So it went for $7.5 million for that Pasadena mansion. And I believe that is a steep, steep discount. Wouldn't it be great if I announced that that me and a bunch of me and a bunch of Patreon baddies, we all went in on the mansion together. But seven point five for that place. Listen, I don't think I have any need for a prayer room. I love Erica Jane's spiritual room. You know that room. They had clips of it in this past week's episode, and then it was like. This is my library. And there were no books to be seen. It was just like wood paneling. And then like a half nude shot of Erica and her beaver just hanging over the fireplace. You know, kind of like the Los Angeles Public Library. Um, so this money is going to go to the victims, which I think is an excellent idea. Um, you know, slowly but surely, hopefully these people are all getting paid off unfortunately all the lawyers involved probably get paid off too so that probably cuts into a big chunk of that stuff so i am so glad that we are finally uh getting some action but like who bought that house i want to know i mean can we throw ragers there dude by the way that's where i should do my first live show the first so bad it's good live show should be at tom and erica's old pasadena mansion dude just run it out for a night wouldn't that be a blast like I've always wanted to do it at Buga de Bebo, but they said it could only like hold 50 people, which I thought was ridiculous. But Tom and Erica's mansion, that'd be like a close second, right? That's exciting. Um, also, in TV news, this is I just read this article that I find interesting. Now, Saturday Night Live, I don't know if you guys are a fan of that show. I have grown up watching every episode of Saturday Night Live. And I don't even like them anymore. I don't even like, I watch them angry most of the time, but it's one of those things, you know, it's like my dad got me watching when I was a kid with him. So it always stuck. And I love the history because each season you would have all these new comedians or, you know, people that you had never heard of and you get to see their talents and all of this amazing stuff. And they're going into season 48 in a couple of weeks and they're starting the season 
uh, with uh, Miles Teller from Top Gun Maverick and musical guest Kendrick Lamar. Okay. And then the next week they have Brendan Gleeson. Okay. And Megan the Stallion. Uh, that will be M- Megan the Stallion actually is going to host and be the musical guest. And Willow, Will Smith's daughter, who I guess is a singer now as well. I know I should probably know more of her songs, but I don't. I know the Whip My Hair Back and Forth song from a long time ago. Uh, She's going to be a musical guest, but I was reading this interview with the show's creator, Lauren Michaels. So we're almost 50 years of SNL. Now, there's a great um, book by James Andrew Miller, who wrote that H- HBO Tinderbox book that I kept telling you about that I was fascinated. I just finished a couple of weeks ago and it told the history of HBO, but really the history of streaming television, which I am just so obsessed with right now. But he also did an oral history of Saturn- Saturday Night Live. Now it came out like 15 years ago. So a lot's happened since then, but it was fascinating. It was just so cool. But it says in this article, Lauren Michaels has shared that he still has no plans to retire at the 50th anniversary. I was like, you know what? Maybe make some plans. I kind of always thought he would give the reins to Tina Fey at some point, but this is interesting. And I, I only talk about this because this is a show that not only deals with Bravo and reality, but kind of all pop culture. And you have to pay attention to Saturday night live because it's been so influential in so many ways. Think about how many comedians and comedians it's broken. Think about how many movie stars that show has made from Eddie Murphy to Adam Sandler to Kristen Wiig. I mean, it is just insanity, the amount of talent that has walked through those halls, but their schedule when they do Saturday Night Live has not changed since it premiered. I think it premiered in 1976. Is that right? And what the schedule is, and the only way I know the reason I know this from the book, but I also, um, I know uh, Casey Wilson used to be in my acting class. I, I think you might know her from a little show called Bitch Sesh. And she came in and talked to our class about the experience after she had left the show. And the show has not changed. So what you do, uh, Saturday, you do the show and you're there all day and all night. You're running on fumes. Then you go party that Saturday night. Sunday is your day off. Monday, you come in and you meet the new host for the week. So say it's like John Ham. So you're like, John Ham, hey, hey. And every cast member and a writer, I think as well, pitches one idea like, oh, I was thinking da, da, da. And just like a quick meet and greet. And then Tuesday, people start writing ideas. Now, Wednesday uh, is the read through. And so they sit at this big table. They all cram in to this office you can see pictures online it's a very tiny thing they have food out and they read through like a billion sketches a billion sketches i mean imagine that like in in theory you're like oh that must be a lot of fun but no it's like i've done it. it's like that's intense and everybody's trying to get their idea and everybody's trying to come up with something and then Wednesday night, some of the sketches start to get pared down, but then you have to write all night. So you stay up Tuesday night all night. You stay up Wednesday night all night. Then usually during the days, uh, some of those times you have to go film the filmed sketches with the host. Now they start really paring it down Thursday night, Friday. They start really, um, kind of, you know, making the sets, all of this stuff. And then Saturday is the big day and they have two shows. They have a run through show, um, which is everything. And they do it for time. And that's when Lauren decides, okay, you know what? We have to cut that sketch for time, take that sketch out. And so there will be sketches in full costumes. Uh, Most recently, if you remember the Kim Kardashian, uh, they did one with, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, why am I blanking on so many names? Uh, I'm, I'm calling him by his Instagram name, Faye Dunaway, but he's the insanely talented uh, from Las Culturistas, Las Culturistas, Bo and Yang. Um, he had a sketch with Kim Kardashian and they had to, uh, they called it at the last minute and they had made costumes, a set, but that's how it goes. And then you do two performances on Saturday night and one is aired live and then you go party and then you rinse and repeat. And that is an insane schedule. I mean, that has never changed since 1976. 
But I think if you do watch Saturday Night Live every week like I do, it's really interesting to pay attention to because I feel like there is traditions, right? There's even traditions with this podcast. But like I've also made changes over the years as well. Uh, I remember when we first started this podcast, I would do song recaps where I would take the lyrics to a Housewives song and I would on the spot go through it lyric by lyric and do a dramatic interpretation of what that song means like on display by melissa gorga or even we did stars are blind by paris hilton one episode and those are back in like the first year of the pod and then eventually that went uh went south you know it was really fun but it was like okay let's change that and you change these little pieces but saturday night live hasn't changed that much and in doing so I feel like that's been a huge mistake in some ways because hopefully the kids dig it. But then for people like me, I'm like, oh man, I've heard most of these comic ideas. And especially for like the news, we see and hear most of them by the time Saturday rolls around because there's somebody on Twitter, some smart ass on Instagram like myself. We've already come up with those jokes that you hear parroted back on Saturday. When the show first started out in the 70s, 80s, and even 90s, these ideas were legendary because we didn't have a bunch of people on Twitter making random jokes at all times. We didn't have this kind of common brain uh, on pop culture. And now we do. That's why I think it's so cool that we get to do this show and there's so many shows out there that talk about pop culture now because – we get to see how it changes. and we get to see how we have this communal mind, but I think it's a mistake to keep doing the same thing day in, day out with SNL, because sometimes if you watch that show, you will get absolutely bored at times, or you'll not laugh once, you know? I mean, I, I, I like that. I secretly hope that the show is meant for like nine-year-olds and like, they're the ones that should be really enjoying it, but it just, it, it just, doesn't really even strike me as smart sometimes. Now, one of my clients, I used to be an acting coach, or I still am at times, Melissa Villa Senior, and she is one of the best, uh, just best artists. And I really will say artists because not only can she imitate anybody, she's an artist, she's a singer, uh, and she's got just a really good heart. And what I really think is very artistic in so many ways. She chose not to come back this season, which is a bummer, but she would even tell me how intense that show is, how intense the process is, because remember, it, you know, you're all fighting to get your idea out there. And sometimes with Melissa, I'd be like, dude, I've seen what Melissa can do. And that show did not use her to the best of her ability. I'm like, if they could see what Melissa really can do. And she was already great on that show, but man, I would have loved to have like, she has some imitations that I just, I'm just like, this is like, they never even let her do her Owen Wilson. She does the best Owen Wilson I've ever in my life seen. Like, <laughs> wow. What? I can't even, she's just amazing. So um, the reason I, why I was also thinking about Saturday Night Live is because I talked a little bit, um, I've talked about this idea where now with Bravo and Housewives, it feels like sometimes it's become an audition process like Saturday Night Live. Like these housewives audition to get on the show. They show you their big houses and their exciting lives. And this is what you can see. And this is what you can see. And a lot of the times it's fake, right? But then on the flip side of that, you also have to deal with a Saturday Night Live star leaving the show. Like this past season, Pete Davidson, Kate McKinnon, a lot of great, SNL cast members left the show. It was their time. But usually Lauren will even tell you, you have to go Lauren Michaels, or you'll decide that it's time to move on. Now, most housewives don't decide it's time to move on. The show always lets them know. And I feel like that's the difference with this whole SNL, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> analogy here is that once a housewives leaves, it's different than SNL. Because SNL, you leave and you have a lot of other opportunities immediately. You, you get you get a TV show most of the times. You get a movie. You get something. But with Housewives, it's weird. You don't get that. And that's why I think it is so important to focus on the behavior of Housewives when they know they're about to leave a show 
when they know that they might have to face the real world again. And then that climb to try to get back on their show because nobody on Saturday night live, you, you know, it's like, you never hear like Pete Davidson left the show in 2022. And then in 2024, he desperately begged to come back, you know, like that, that never happens with Saturday night live cast members, but with housewives, it seems once you leave the show, the next step is to try to get back on the show. You know, like that's what, and by the way, and it's proven with housewives that it can work sometimes. Tamara being a perfect example is coming back on OC. Dorinda is rumored to be a part of the New York Real Housewives of New York legacy cast or whatever that is, which I feel like we'll get an announcement during BravoCon about and get more details on. But I think that's the part that's different is that when it's SNL or something like that, you don't worry about them, right? Because you're like, oh, these people are super talented. Like, look at that. They'll be able to take that gift to the movies or TV or whatever. But with Housewives, you're like, what the fuck are they going to do? What do you, I mean, like, what, what, I mean, listen, I'm a dude, so I don't, what is the demand for Rena Beauty or Rena Rose if Rena doesn't have a place to promote either of those products, except for her Instagram? So that's what I'm saying is that sometimes you start sensing this desperation, not only with Rena, we've seen this time and time again. In fact, this is what I would love to watch a documentary on is just the panic that sets in with these ladies because it's palpable. You start to sense it even in their social media posting. And then, you know, you, you, you start to, oh my God, you know, they're, they're trying to stay in touch with all of the housewives they can muster like Bronwyn Wyndham Burke, like travels far and wide to try to hang out at any housewives or past housewives thing just to stay in the mix. And my thought would be, why can't the housewives be a launching pad like SNL? If you audition like SNL, and if you try desperately to get on the show, which we see now people and these ladies do, why do you ever want to get back on the show? Why can't this show propel you to something more? And that's a question I'm literally asking you guys. Is it because it's not a discernible talent? I mean, these ladies are super entertaining. That's a talent of some sort. Now, they can't juggle or say the alphabet backwards or something like that, but that's a talent, right? But usually they just have to like shill, shill their shitty products, but they get to do that on the show. I don't know. It's just something I keep thinking about, and we'll find out more when – Beverly Hills is over and if anybody stays and anybody goes, but also I keep questioning, you know, like SNL, if you've seen something for 50 years, the same thing, do we want, do we need to see the same thing again and again? I think that is part of the exhaustion of talking about the Lisa Renna, Kathy Hilton, Mish, Mishigash, because Miss because we've seen Lisa pull these things time and time and time again. It's like the Scream franchise where you're like, I get it. Like, it's the scary movie thing and they're going to do a little quiz on the phone and then somebody's going to die. It takes the excitement away. And I got to tell you, I believe in the format enough. I believe in Bravo enough. And I believe in women and their husbands or boyfriends enough that I know there is more interesting women out there. Don't you ever think about that as much as we're fans of these people? Like, listen, Tom Brady is staying, I guess, around until he passes out. He's never leaving. He wants to be, you know, literally the Kyle Richards of NFL playing season after season. I mean, he's in mid forties right now, but at a certain point, I would like to see new stories. That's why I do appreciate the reboot of Miami. That's why I uh, was, I actually started watching Dubai. I watched the reunions actually, and I had not even finished the season. And I really liked the reunions. And I was like having to remind myself, it is hard to introduce yourself to new characters because we've fallen in love with so many of these past people. But that's cool. We always, we respect and, and we will study these historic ladies for the rest of Bravo's days. But let's get new blood in there, too. Let's find a way. And I know this is not the State of the Union, but it's something I've been thinking about so much lately because you get to the end of these seasons, and especially like Beverly Hills, 
or even Atlanta in a way. Atlanta wasn't exhausting to me, but I think the last reunion kind of petered out. I was watching it before I talked to you guys and I was like, okay, yeah, everybody's, everybody's good. Okay. But the Beverly Hills is just exhausting because you're yelling the same things at the screen about the same people. And it's like, they're not going to change. They're amping it up because they're panicked and they're, it feels like they're worried about their job. So why don't we try a different way? And that might be sacrilegious to some of you people. It, it truly might be, but that's okay. You know, but remember the show is the thing. We love the show. Not one person, I don't care if it's Bethany Frankel, I don't even care if it's NeNe Leakes, not one person makes or breaks this show. And we got to believe that because if we don't believe that, we don't have a network. And I think Bravo is one of the most enjoyable networks with some of the best potential out there. And that's why you got to always support the shows. And that is the end of my state of the union. Sorry, that was just in my head. And this is, this is the best part of the podcast. I'll be thinking about something during the day. And I'm like, okay, I can go rap to my friends on the podcast about this because I bet you some of you guys have thought the same thing. <sighs> um, okay. Let's uh, let's play some Southern Charm music, and we're going to get into a recap. Hey, how long have you guys worked in Food and Bev? My fave Craig Conover line ever. <laughs> okay. Uh, Southern Charm. What, what, what do you got to say about Southern Charm? We're on episode 14, and this next week, th- or I guess this week, this Thursday, will be the final episode, and we get to... Uh, we get to see how many episodes the reunion is. I'm guessing, you think two or three? It depends if Craig drinks. If Craig drinks, we got a three-parter. If it, Craig controls himself, two parts. Will Paige be a part of this? Who knows? But I have to tell you, from what this show started as, like I said last week, a complete mess, it has become one of the most entertaining messes to watch. There are still so many things wrong with it, but it has such potential because it really shows men and all of their sides. And I don't mean that as a compliment. I really do think it shows what men, you know, how we always think of housewives as like ego driven. Southern charm is the male equivalent in a lot of ways that a female housewife show would be. We see the same kind of behavior. These men that think they know how they want to live, but only the dastardly women are keeping them from truly doing it. But all the, also these men that don't know how to control their emotions and don't know why they feel these big feelings and they get upset so much, but they also are able to turn it off the next day. They're like, ah, let's, it's fine. Let's go, let's go crabbing. Let's go, let's go get some shrimp. You know, it is just wild to me. And I got to tell you, sometimes it makes me really not proud to be a dude. Not that there's any time where I'm like, <laughs> there's no, you know, to be honest, I don't, I think I ever wake up and be like, fuck yeah. I'm a dude. I five. Like, like the peeing thing is cool. I hear with the women, you have to like, you know, but I can just pee wherever. In fact, I live off of Melrose, you know, you guys, and and like I'm pretty chill for the most part. But it was like 9 30 a.m. I look over, this gentleman is just peeing all right on Melrose, right on like a store. I mean, before it opened, it wasn't like, pee. but still, I was just like, really? Like me, I would be like, I, I mean, I've had to pee everywhere. Uh, but I'll go find, I'll, I'll go hide. But this dude is proudly, and this, um, this is not like a homeless gentleman or anything like that. He's a regular dude, just peeing, 9.30 in the morning. I live in a pretty decent area, you know, which is like, wow. To me, that's like a lot of the men of Southern Charm. They would not be afraid to pee anywhere. They are cocky peers in the middle of public. That's how they strike me. They They pee first, think later. That's who these guys are. And it's funny because they all pat each other on the back for like little things, but then also attack each other viciously for big things. But then they're like, but also a sweet, sensitive soul. Like Craig completely went batshit 
at this restaurant mullet mullet bay or whatever the fuck it was last week which is where we pick up this week just crazy just down in yay you know like i i told you i love myself a jaeger shot i've actually graduated to frenet bronco which i actually haven't had in a while now and i miss it because it's just guys if you've ever had frenet it's like an italian liqueur it's a digestive but it's disgusting like truly a disgusting thing. It's But then it's like one of those things when you're younger, when your parents let you have a sip of wine or something, and then your dad or you're like, hey, it, it, you know, that'll grow on you. And you're like, this is disgusting. It will never grow on me. And then all of a sudden you're like, the Fernet Bronca is not bad. I like it with a truly. It's a nice. Ugh. Anyways. Craig's down in Jaeger shots. Shep's like, this dude's drinking his balls off. By the way. That's not me saying that's an actual Shep line, which is like, that's something I would say. It's like, I don't know what's going on with Craig. He's drinking his balls off. And we've all been there, right? We've all been there where we've drank our balls off, where it's just like, let's keep going. But I will say, this is how you know I'm growing as a person. My uh, my liver was hurting watching Craig down shot after shot because I'm like, ah, let's throw a water in there. I saw on the table he had a big old Diet Coke or what looked like maybe it was a Coke. Maybe but it looked, I was like, that's smart, but let's see you drinking a little bit more of that. It is so weird when you start to turn into your mother watching Southern Charm where you're like, could, any, could we get some water being passed around? Is anybody making sure we're, we're hydrated? Maybe one drink, two waters, and then go back to a drink? Like I was... I was like, this isn't going to end well. And the weird thing is Whitney is in this scene. And remember the whole, the thing with Whitney though, as I always point out, Whitney Sudler Smith is the producer on this show. So it's weird. So he's that guy that is trying to act like part of the gang. They obviously all kiss this dude's ass. Like they, they let this dude make fun of all of them. Like, do you notice how that like Whitney can make fun of everybody and Chef's like, okay, okay. Cause this guy gave them all jobs. I mean, seriously. But I would love to speak to Whitney because I'm like, Whitney, do you secretly hate all of them? But you know, this is kind of your job. So you're just there overseeing things and, you know, like, yep. Okay. Keep drinking, Craig. Okay. Slow down, but keep drinking. Like he's kind of poking the bear from afar. Like, I feel like there should be some kind of like rules where you can't be a producer and actively be in the show because that's dangerous because you're trying to create the best show ever. You know, like you're picking up everybody's drinks and then putting a camera on them, but you're also in the shot. We have we ever seen Whitney completely lose his shit? Like Whitney is, I mean, I'm not talking about his guitar playing. I'm talking, have we ever seen Lee, uh, him just completely break down? Like it just like, I mean, have we? I don't know if we have. And that's what I'm saying. These men will step to each other, but they'll never step to Whitney. And I find that fascinating. We start off Southern Charm like we always do. And that is with a title. This episode title is called Trollin and Brawlin. Hmm. Trollin and Brawlin. Okay. So Brawlin is fighting and there's some fights. Okay. I got to tell you folks, and I didn't look this up. I don't know what the fuck trawling is. Like I, I think trolley, but it's spelled T-R-A-W-L-I. And what is trawling? Troll? To trawl? Like I think it was like trolling, but trawling and bro- a big fail on this for me, just because like use words that I can understand Southern Charm producers, please. We start off as always with the narration, uh, letting us know every scene that has happened on this show from the beginning of time. And we have Naomi's voice going previously on Southern Charm. And Craig's like, someone saw Shep on Raya, an active profile, which by the way, <laughs> Miss Patricia on Instagram this week, uh, this weekend, let let us know that her dog, the female dog, we had the dog wedding between little Craig and her dog, said they are no longer together. And then, of course, me being the smart ass I am, I think I saw that post like right when she posted it. So I immediately wrote, oh, no, did she find little Craig's active ro- ro- <laughs> Did she find that little Craig had an active Raya, f- <laughs> Raya account? And um, Miss Patricia liked it, but I don't know if she knows what that meant. But it's those are hard, like those are jokes that make me laugh. And I think that's, you know, because Shep had an active Raya profile. That is a funny joke, but it does. 
it's like I'm that little kid at school that needs to get the joke off because he's so insecure and I need to get that joke off. But then, you know, it's Miss Patricia. And I was like one of the first people to comment because then, you know, you know, Shep sees it, you know, Austin and Craig. And then it's like, who's this so bad? It's good dickhead. Is this the same dickhead that said I, Austin, shouldn't be on Summer House anymore because I finger banged all the ladies? Yeah, it's the same one. And that's the thing is that I don't really truly have hate in my heart. I mean, maybe Rena, you could argue at times and Erica Jane in regards to the the victims of Tom Girardi and her music. But other than that, I don't have a strong hatred. Well, you could mind throw Jax on there as well. Who knows? I'm just saying it's not a strong hatred for any of these guys. I don't like how they treat women a lot of the times, but Dude, I talked to Shep on the show. I would love to do mushrooms with Shep. I would love to have a drink with Shep. I just wouldn't want to introduce any girl that I was friends with to Shep. You know what I'm saying? It would be like pushing somebody into a, like a, a, a dark cave with an elderly lion. You know, you just don't know what they're going to do, but they're used to a certain way of living. Like, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so you just know though that it's like, it's like, oh, he's just trolling. I'm like, well, could you also appreciate that that's a good joke? Don't, don't get it. Like Craig, Craig, Craig and Paige have both blocked me. <laughs> I'm sure Paige, because I make fun of how she loves to lay down all the time, which is true. She loves to lay down. Be proud of that girl. Also, all of these people. Now, I will tell you the difference between the Southern Charm people and Housewives. The Southern Charm people and Summer House people, to a degree, seem like they have things going on. I mean, Loverboy for Summer House, great business. I truly believe that's going to keep getting bigger and bigger. Craig. I mean, is there is there a is there a ceiling on how big pillows will go? No, everybody needs a pillow. That thing's going to be huge. Uh, Shep, I think, invests in a lot of restaurants. Austin has Trop Hop, even though I hear it tastes like deer piss. JK, JK, I hear it's it's an actual beer. But you know, like they have things going on. Paige, very successful podcast. They do live shows all the time with her and the the Hannah Banana Girl, and that's going good. So I hope they are not as sensitive as I think they are, but they obviously they are because, you know, I didn't block Craig. I like, I even had to go back and check this weekend. I was like, maybe I blocked Craig because I put up a joke and I wanted to protect him from that joke. Sometimes I will block people I make fun of because I just, why, why, why put that in there? You know, why put that in their head? But Craig, I think it must've been one of the, his lawyer, like, like only one man can represent Jen Shaw. And it was like Craig Conover, like only one man can represent Tom Girardi. And it was Craig Con. Like, cause I just think he took this law photo, you guys, it's like super serious. And he's like, you know what it was like? If you're in a crash, call Conover. <laughs> if you're in a rollover, call Conover. And it was just, that was funny. These law pictures to me. And he also, he announced it around the same time as sewing down South. Cause I was like, damn, this guy all of a sudden has five jobs. We couldn't even get him to like take the bar exam. We couldn't even get him to mail in his, remember when he, he wouldn't mail in his, his bar exam or some shit and he wouldn't mail it in. And he just like was lazy and he was lying about it. Like this new Craig be like, this is the guy he wrote a book. He wrote Pillow Talk, you guys, which, by the way, my buddy Samaj got him to sign a happy birthday, Ryan Bailey, with a heart. So I'm assuming that Craig thinks that I'm uh, gay, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Wait, did Craig sign this or did Samaj sign this? Oh, I need to ask. I think it's a Craig Conover. Who knows? Anyways, still amazing. And also I have the Shep Rose book. Is this signed? It is signed. Oh, amazing. That's going to be something I can pass down to generations to come. Um, so anyways, Craig, uh, Paige, I'm looking forward to meeting you at BravoCon. That's what I was saying. We got to get disguises for me at BravoCon. We also got to decide about the mustache or not, you guys. And do I, do I, do I have like a code name at BravoCon when I meet Bravo celebrities that might be mad at me? Do I say things like like hi I'm I'm Chuck I'm Chuck Jagarni Jagarni Chuck uh, hey I'm Chuck Jagarni oh I'm a big fan I'm Chuck Jagarni like I could be anybody I I don't have to be Ryan Bailey at BravoCon I could be uh, Farnsworth Farns Farnsworth Bobbly you know like I could be anybody I got to think of a better name but you know what I'm saying because then if I like see Austin do I tell him 
I'm the guy that made a change.org to get him off of Summer House. Do I say that? Like, how do we have a do we have a laugh? Like, how do I handle this, you guys? I mainly want to meet like other Bravo like-minded viewers. I don't want to meet Lisa Rinna or Erica Jane ever, but the rest of them, like, I wouldn't mind meeting them, but do I do I just hang my head in shame? Do I say, hey, I just told the truth how I see it? Or do I go, do I use their excuse? Man, I think it was the editing. It's got to be the editing because you seem pretty cool. I don't know. Let me know if you guys have any advice in the comments. Um, okay, so previously on Southern Charm, someone saw Shep, Shep on Raya. And we see Paige with her headband that is like showing her forehead like an IMAX screen. And she's like, any girl would be absolutely livid if they found their boyfriend on Raya. Um and Craig's like, well, she hasn't held him accountable for anything. I love, I mentioned this before, but Craig's cement mouth when he, and this is when he's dead sober. That's when you know Craig's sober. He's like, yeah, it's, he just has, uh, he's so confident that he doesn't even need to open his mouth fully. Now, when he's drunk, he's even a little worse, but he's also looser with his body movements. So it's really fascinating how Craig speaks. Um, but luckily, he's just a damn good looking guy. So damn good looking dudes can do whatever they want, you know. And uh, then Naomi goes, just as Shep invited us on a trip to prove everything was a OK with Taylor. And then Shep's like, we're going to have fun, you guys. We're going to have. I know. I know. I told her to go fuck herself and she was a fucking idiot because of an egg toss. But this trip going to be fun. And then. Naomi goes, Leva decided to do this latest, this give this latest outing a hard pass. And Leva goes, I don't have the bandwidth for the boys. How about you get a check to hang with the boys? I don't care necessarily if you have the bandwidth. You've signed a contract. I'm sorry. Leva is, I don't have any issue with Leva, but I do have an issue of like, you can't just sit and bake cookies with your son all like season. My God. I've told you, it's like her son is her scene partner in every episode. I've seen her son more than I've seen John Pringle. That's not right. No offense to the son. Very cute. Just don't really see a lot of plot lines with the son headed in a different, you know, the son's not already going to start dating Madison next season, you know? Like, I don't need it. Leva, have the bandwidth to deal with the boys because you get paid to deal with the boys. Meanwhile, Austin didn't have the bandwidth for the BS. And then we see that scene where Austin went behind Shep's bag back and totally ignored bro code and was like to Taylor, it was like, I just don't like the way he talks to you sometimes, you know, and Taylor's like, just an angel's like, he said he would work on it. I know Taylor, but it's been two years. And then we have that car ride where Shep and Austin are in the car and Shep's like, you know what? I kind of want Taylor to quit her job. And Austin's like, if she has any self-respect, she won't do that, man. And then Olivia goes, but by the time we all got to St. Simon's and then we see the tennis match, things were looking up. Um, and then we get the music. Don't you know? Don't you know? That is until Craig felt it was time to burn it down, Naomi says. And this is when Shep's like, Craig is drinking his nuts off. I don't even know what's going on. And then Craig drunkenly stumbles back to the table. Naomi, you been sitting there with your frown. Turn your frown upside down. And then Naomi's like, well, Leva said you really said really mean things about me at Friendsgiving. Do you guys ever feel ridiculous when you say something that is, you know, like that's an actual gripe, but then you have to put friends giving or dog wedding in it. Like you talk shit at me at a dog wedding. Like, I don't think I would be able to really ever respect myself. Not that I do now, but I wouldn't even be able to further respect myself. If I said you hurt my feelings at friends, giving. <laughs> friends, give you hurt my feelings at the dog wedding. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just ridiculous. And then Craig's trying to defend himself. What you heard, did you did you hear that from me? You didn't hear you heard from her. You didn't hear from me. And then Craig drunkenly realizes he has no leg to stand on. He's like, just stop, just stop. Moving on, move on with your fucking life. Seriously. It's crazy. Stop bringing me into it. It's easy as the birds and the bees and the one, two, three. 
And then he goes, the kids go loco. I love how they end. The kids go loco. Best damn song, period. We cut to where we left off at the mullet restaurant. Uh, Craig gets up at the to go to the bar again. He's like, just get, get over me. And then Olivia, Austin's chick, which, by the way, supposedly Olivia unfollowed Austin after the reunion. Ugh. What do you think the age range is where you should stop unfollowing people out of spite that you've been in relationships with? Do you think there's an age where it gets embarrassing? Like, will we still be doing this in our 60s and 70s and 50s? Like, will we st- Will we keep like... I don't follow that bastard. And I'm like, okay, grandma, that's cool. But like, you know, like, when is that going to stop? And then, um, so Vanita and, uh, Vanita and Naomi are back at the table. We see a shot of them and Olivia's like, Craig, stop being such a diva. Don't be in such a grumpy mood. Olivia's like ready to party this trip. And then Craig's like, do you want a shot? Do you want a shot, Olivia? And she's like, okay. And he's like, one Jaeger for me. And she orders a tequila. And I'm like, these fuckers just keep going. Like, it reminded me of like, you know, that prime age, I would say between 25 and 30, where you could drink your nuts off. And you would feel it sometimes the next day, but nothing like you feel it now. Like now, sometimes you'll have two day hangovers and you're like, I had two glasses of wine. What the hell? It is so unfair. Like if God exists, like if you could choose, like, I feel like, see, I feel like the world should work like a video game sometimes where we get, you know, like video games, you earn points or, or, you know, like a ski ball machine, you get the balls. And if you get enough numbers, you get like a bunch of tickets and then you can turn in the tickets for a prize. I feel like life should be like that too. Like if you get, if you get to your job on time and do your work, you get like five bonus points. If you make sure your room is clean, room is clean you get 10 bonus points and you're able to turn that in for prizes like hey i go out this saturday and i won't get hung over but i can drink my balls off i feel like life and i'm talking to you lord we should we should have prizes like that do you realize how hard how much harder we'd work for everything if we if, if god let us in on a point system come on like literally like you know, like uh, I choose not to have a uh, horrible gas on a first date. Not that I've ever had. I'm using that as an example from someone. That's not me. I'm using that as an example. But you know what I'm saying? Like, wouldn't that be cool if we could? Damn it. That's a good idea. Oh, if anybody is working in God's PR, or anybody that works for God would love to give me a shout out. I'd love to get a meeting. Um, so they do the shots. And Austin says, oh. Austin says this to Naomi. He's like, I wish to God you were my ex. And Naomi goes, what? And Chef goes, that is the weirdest, greatest thing you've ever said. And then Austin's like, because my ex made my life a living hell. Austin, we get it, bro. You got your feelings hurt. You bring it up every episode. We get it. We've also seen you hurt a bunch of other women. We get it. We get it. Let's let it go. And the same thing is funny, though, because we're seeing Craig exhibit the same behavior, even though Craig yelled at Austin for like, let Madison go. We're seeing Craig drink his nuts off because he's offended that Naomi said, hey, everybody, let's not talk over the waitress. How long are you working food and bev, Naomi? How long are you working food and bev? Everybody loves to criticize their male counterpart when they are actually doing the same damn thing. Like what Austin is like not being able to get over Madison. It looks like Craig's not able to get over Naomi. I just think it's an interesting thing because it's like, Craig, do you not even realize how hypocritical you can be sometimes? I mean, we're all like that in a way. So Shep is like continuing. He's like, man, that was the saddest thing to say, but it was also really weird. Craig and Olivia come back and he's, she, Craig's like, what, what happened once I left? Do I even dare ask? In a talking head, Craig goes, I'm definitely more irritable when she's around. No shit. Are, whoa, Craig, talk about self-awareness. You are more irritable when she's around. She's just the most condescending person. And it's like, we broke up and you don't get to tell me what to do or how to act or anything anymore. Don't you want Craig to be in 
like a remake of home alone it's like i wish i didn't have any parents ever and then craig wakes up <laughs> craig alone <laughs> craig alone. the movie that'll warm your heart coming this holiday season but that's how he acts of like you don't get to tell me <laughs> like it's just like he got burned so badly that, that he will never get over this anger. And he's just also so drunk on top of that. They go back to the house from this. And I'm like, okay, time to call it quits. No way. We're still partying, bro. And Craig, we hear get into the van and he goes, do you think our driver's ticklish? Seriously, you guys, I only made it one episode into that Dahmer miniseries on Netflix right now that just came out this weekend. But I imagine if I'd kept going, I would have heard Dahmer at some point go, do you think this driver's ticklish? Like, what a bizarre thing to say. Do you think this driver's ticklish? Well, I don't know. I I usually just think about the driver getting us where we go safely. Like, geez, like, then you just had this, I just had this image of, like, the van rolling over because Craig was trying to do a tickle war with Eddie, the driver, you know? Olivia says, how lucky am I between sitting between two studs? And she's sitting... <laughs> between craig and austin and craig's like <laughs> and austin's like pissed because he's just not like he, did, he doesn't like how this night went he just looks annoyed uh we get back to the house Vanita's like i'm gonna go to bed of course you are Vanita. and olivia is like i'm gonna put my cozies on and then craig we see craig immediately get out of the van and put austin in a headlock And Austin's like, don't fuck with me, Craig. Don't fuck with me. Uh, and Craig's like, Ugh. like he's, I, I gotta tell you, man, this is when I watch shows like this, I realize that I've never been a true man <laughs> because I've never, I've never put one of my friends in a headlock, even sober or drunk. I've never, I've never even, I've never played grab ass with a friend. I, you know, I, I, I think I played that slap game where you're trying to slap each other's hands, but I think I've done that with women too. So like, I don't think I've like, is this what, like, are, what, like this, I feel like I've missed out. You know what? I got it. That's a good idea. Bravo con to like kind of show Craig that I'm uh, that everything we're cool is that I should put him in a headlock. <laughs> and then Craig's like, Oh, tell me now, Ryan. No, that's what Austin, Austin says, Craig, I'm tapping out. In a talking head, Austin's like, Craig, a bull in a fucking China shop. That was insane. And then Craig's drunk. He's getting back, you know, up to the house. And then Craig's like, let's go home. I want to go home. Remember, him and Austin are in a villa away from the main house. And Austin's like, dude, just go. I'm saying here, just go to the left, go to the left. Austin walks back in. We see Taylor pouring a big giant wine mug with ice and straight maker's mark. And I'm like, these fucking people get down, dude. I'm telling you, this reminds me of that age from 25 to 30 where you're not even putting a mixer in. You're like, ice cube's a mixer. I put it, it you, do, you want, do you want a maker's an ice cube? Mmm. Like that is, um, I mean, not a, ma it's just incredible. And I hate to say it because drinking can be such an issue and is such an issue for some people. It truly is dangerous, but I hate, like this makes me feel such like an asshole, but it can sometimes make for the most entertaining reality shows. But it's like, you've got to walk that line. You can't have it all be that. You know what I'm saying? Like somewhere else is great, but then you got to temper it with something else. That's why Dorinda on the last season of Roni, it was hard to watch because it seemed like it was just that. Even in that last episode, her last episode on Roni, when she started yelling like, Tinsley Mortimer, you can take this. You threaten to leave the show. It was just nasty. Sometimes drinking can look fun when you're young. And when you watch them drink as they get older, it turns into from fun to nasty. And that's a huge difference. And all of a sudden, it's not fun to watch anymore. So uh, Olivia hops up on Austin's uh, midsection and like bear hugs him. And then Naomi's like, kiss, kiss, kiss. And they kiss. And Naomi's like, you're welcome. And Olivia's like, first base. And then we see Austin and Olivia with the camera. And Naomi's there. And Whitney comes in. And Austin's like, do it, do it, do it. And you guys trigger warning put the kids out of the room if they're listening to this 
<sighs> Naomi kisses Whitney. I don't know if it was CGI. Something seemed so unnatural about it, but it it uh, it felt like a sucker punch. I was like, oh, I almost was like, is this the end of the episode? I was like, oh my god, there's a lot more left, and it is that it, it felt like you guys remember? Did you, any of you guys ever watch that Star Wars when Luke and Leah kiss in Star Wars, or like you know? And then later on, we find out they're brother and sister. That's what this moment felt, felt like a little. Past. Taylor says Taylor's in the other room goes where's the marshmallows when you need them and she's warming herself by a candlelight like a little candle you know and she's sitting on the ground and chef's on the couch and chef's like come here please can you please sit next to me I would like that and Taylor's like this is more copacetic down here in a talking head Taylor goes chef is entitled especially when he's been drinking he has the mentality of a 12 year old I might dare say even when he isn't drinking potentially and Taylor gets up and he's like where are you going Taylor and she's like to go hang out and he's like I don't like you going and hanging out and Naomi's there and goes Shepard you be nice and he has this grin on his face like he's been caught like a kid uh so taylor goes in the room with olivia and austin in the kitchen and olivia says can we do some sort of shot and i'm like they're still going they pour tequila and then all of a sudden craig is facetiming austin and they're like answer it answer it austin answers and craig like just looks he's like hey 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 come to our room come to our room and austin's like you sure you're in our room and he's like yeah tell tell them they want to come to our room and tell them they want to come to our room he's like i got food i got chips and i got chips i got doritos come to my room and austin just hangs up and he goes shut up craig like austin austin is like you know like i feel like he's it's that time of the month for Austin. Like he, you know, it's something is going on. And I really truly was wondering what date was this filmed? Because something must have really bad happened to Austin a couple, like this week of filming, because he has been in a cranky mood and he usually is a lot more timid and tepid, but in this, he is just pissy this whole episode and last week's as well. We cut to Whitney shaking Shep's hand and uh, he comes in the room where Naomi and Shep are and Shep had just been playing with his feet. And he's like, no, I don't want to shake your hands. You've been touching your feet. And Shep says, why are you worried about me? And when he's like, because because you're one of my best friends. Or, you know, are you a dick? Yes. But is it mean-spirited? No. I like how now all of a sudden we went from Craig being wasted, which I think the spotlight should be on, to all of a sudden Shep having the conversation about Shep again. In a talking head, um. Shep's like, this is a fucking ongoing saga conversation. Like, I'm not going to feed into this conversation. And Shep goes, at the end of the day, you're punished for your kindnesses. And in theory, like, that's, you know, I, okay, I get it. It's kind of philosophical in a way. But like he's saying, like, I'm punished for being a nice guy. But I would kind of push back on this statement. It sounds interesting when you're drunk to say something like this, but in reality, you're not punished for your kindnesses. You're you're punished. I mean, you're you're not punished for your kindnesses. You're punished. You're punished for your kindnesses because you're being kind because you expect something in return. You're not punished for your kindnesses when you're kind because and you don't expect anything for it. But I think sometimes with Shep, he expects something for it. He expects to be rewarded for his kindnesses. Uh, then we set, see uh, the other room, Austin, going, oh, my God, I'm hearing Shep toot his own horn over and over. It's hilarious, which, by the way, is just a weird thing to say in front of somebody's girlfriend, but whatever. Taylor says, okay, let's play a drinking game about their conversation. And Austin goes, yeah, every time Shep says crazy or happy, take a drink. And Taylor's like, oh, that's too much. We don't have enough alcohol. All of a sudden, we hear Shep go crazy. And they're like, yeah. Um, Shep goes to Whitney. He goes, I love Taylor. That's all you need to know. And then Whitney's like, put a ring on that shit, bro. It's been two years. And Shep goes, I'm happy. That's all you need to know. 
Whitney's like, you haven't pulled the trigger. You got to do it sooner than later. And then we hear Shep say crazy again in the room. They do another shot. And then Shep goes, everyone has their opinions, but they don't even listen to their own advice. This is insane. Um, and then all of a sudden the group in the kitchen decide we got to add another word in for the shots game. We, we so far have crazy and happy. And then they're like, Oh, Oh, let's do. I'm done. Oh yeah. The free shots. I'm done. Crazy and happy. And then we hear Shep go, I'm done. They do another drink. Whitney says, Shep, I'm just trying to help you navigate. And Shep goes, I don't need help. And Whitney goes, you do. And then Naomi goes, listen to Whitney. He's never misguided. Uh, Naomi, how's the weather up there in uh, Whitney's asshole? Because what are you talking about? He's never misguided. Dude, this... <laughs> come on. Shep puts his hand in Whitney's hands and he says, I'm happy, 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 man. I'm happy. So now that's one of the shot words. So we see in the kitchen, they start doing shots. Taylor dies from alcohol poisoning. In a talking head... Shep goes, I feel like little piranhas are taking little chunks out of me. And he goes, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. So that's three more shots because done was one of the words. They had to keep doing shots. And then Naomi tells Whitney, I think it's time to go downstairs. And I'm like, oh, girl, not together. Ah! Um, Naomi goes, I think Shep is overreacting, but he's just going to get mad. And I don't want him to be mad at me. So whatever. Now they, uh, Whitney and Naomi go into the kitchen where they're doing shots. Shep walks in too, but he stands at the top of the stairs and we hear Olivia go, Oh my God, it's crazy down here. Oh my God, you guys, we're doing a drinking game based on Shep and what he says. And Shep said crazy nine times and we're drunk. And then Shep he overhears this and he walks down sullenly. And he moves over to Taylor, who's in the corner of the kitchen, and he gets in front of her and he's like, I'm sick of people attacking me. He whispers. Like, who cares? Oh, my God, you guys. For those watching on YouTube, look how big my hair is. This is why I only wear a hat now in all video. I haven't not had a haircut in forever. Look at that. This is wild. This is me trying to get people over to the YouTube. And also, look, it started to have some kind of weird part because it's just growing. Oh, my God. What I've got to get my life together. I'm telling you, the offer stands. If somebody just wants to live with me, move my body parts and all that stuff and make me do things, please reach out. Okay. So. Shep, the Shepherds, is all pouting because, you know, he thinks everybody's making fun of him. He's like, oh, I don't know what to do. And Taylor's like, that's why you're freaking out. He's like, you're damn right. Austin takes another drink because he said right. And she goes, I don't want to see you be angry at Whitney or Naomi. Those are your friends, Shep. Try to do what I do. And then <laughs> Taylor goes, try to do what I do. Pray. And you can just see Shep go, oh. Okay, pray. And Austin finally goes, I can't with these two people whispering at each other. Shep whispering to Taylor, I love you. And I'm like, you've been an embarrassment for too long. You're a fucking moron, Shep. Just wait until bed. God, you're such a fucking pussy. You're such a fucking idiot. Austin says this as he walks out. I'm not even making up. That's what he literally walks out, you guys. And Shep all of a sudden like, he's like, Austin, you're the biggest embarrassment in life. You're a fucking joke. I can't believe I'm sharing oxygen with you. And Austin hears Shep mumbling and walks back inside. So then Shep repeats it a second time. I can't believe I'm sharing oxygen with you. Because he's like, that's a good line. I want to say it again. So, you know, I can get the, you know, the full effect. <laughs> and Taylor, um, He's like, Taylor, you text and call Taylor 24-7, Chef, because you try to control the situation. That's what you do. That's what you did in the car. You just whisper in her ear, chirp, chirp, chirp. And Chef goes, why are you so upset? Why are you even thinking about me? And Austin says, why are you screaming at me? Because I'm not some bad guy, Chef says. I don't want to fight with you. And then Whitney, I don't think his heart rate even got below above 50. He's like, 
break it up guys break it up guys guys shut the fuck up chill austin and the talking head goes at this point i've done enough to be relationship counselor i nothing i say sticks and it's like more trouble than it's worth austin this might be how it's like when when people talk with you about madison that's you know and whitney goes let's revisit in the morning you know and then we cut to um charleston south carolina ding 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 ding. and guess what it's a scene with leva and guess who's the scene with it's her little son their little scene partner, little little forty year old. They're making the mix for some cookies. She's teaching them how to, you know, do some cookies. We go from you son of a bitch to put some eggs in there for mommy, and it's you guys. The all I mean, we've seen so many of these kitchen scenes with the son that I'm like, dude, on the season finale, this motherfucker better make some kind of like souffle. Like, I mean, like, what is this leading up to? Is he going to make like a four course meal? I mean, I seriously hope he makes something because I'm like, I feel like there's been more progress with this kid learning how to cook than anything else on the show. Like, I'm like another cooking scene, Leva? Like, seriously, another cooking? So basically, did we even film this in order or did we just film all of Leva's scenes in one day at her house? Like, go up and change for mommy. We're going to do another another cooking scene down here. Like, what? Come on, you guys. And basically, this whole scene is Leva just going, oh, I'm a control freak. But when you become a mom, you just kind of do what's best for you. So, yay. And they make cookies. You know, they make, I don't even know. It's like, what a, like, let's put the brakes on a show that is going at full speed all of a sudden this episode. And they're like, Rah! Let's make cookies, mommy. <laughs> and then they make them. And she's like, should we hide them from daddy? Your daddy's a cookie monster. I'm like, hide them from daddy. It looks like daddy's been hiding from the show all season. I don't think we've ever seen him. We cut to the next morning. Austin is brushing his teeth. Dental care is key, folks. And I think that's what we'll all take away from this episode. We see the remnants of Craig's room. And he looks like he had a little party. There's pizza, chips. I love that sh- that 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 Craig... Craig drunk eats like me, dude. Like it's like it's party time, you know. And you know how like Schwartz, we always had that theory that Schwartz would get so wasted so he could cheat on Katie. I think Craig might get so drunk just so he can pig out on junk food. I'm the same way. Like if I get drunk, I don't, I don't think you have to worry about me cheating, but you do have to worry about me eating what's ever in the fridge. Like, you know, you you just absolutely do. I told this story. Where did I tell this story? Was it on the podcast? I told this story recently. Oh, God, I forget where I tell stories. So I talk so much now. A horrible story, you guys. I, I think I made it told on this podcast, but it was basically how, like, I was so hammered when I lived. Like, there's like three, this is before the pandemic. I had went out to see Countess Luann at the Wiltern, hung out with like Ronnie, Danny, all this. And we kept drinking. We went to... Uh, sir, and then I, I remember Hannah Brown was with me, and we did, we were hammered, hammered. I'll say it again, hammered. I mean, we were Craig Conover hammered, and then I wake up the next day, and I I I see Tupperware in my room, and I'm like, how did the Tupperware get? Like, how did Tupperware? It was like Chinese food Tupperware, you know. Or not the Chinese food, but I'm like, how did that get in here? When did I get Chinese food? And I had just moved into this place, you guys. I drunkenly took my roommate, who I had not really known that much at that point. I had taken her food and drunkenly ate it. I have no recollection. I'm mean, no recollection of that at all. And I was so embarrassed. I just put $20 back in the container and I put it back in the fridge because I had to go somewhere. But I was just like, how do I even begin to explain that I don't even remember eating this? And could you can you blame it on like a stranger eating? Can you blame that on a stranger? Can you be like, we had a break in? Like, what'd they take? I, I think they got your leftovers, man. That was it. We're lucky. We are very lucky. You know, how do you explain that? Anyways, uh, Austin's brushing his teeth. Craig looks like he just woke up and he's like, hey, get away. And Craig's like, okay, I'll get up. We cut to the other house. Olivia's making coffee. Olivia wants to know if she won the bet or not. And the bet was, will Naomi be in bed with Whitney? And it's like, they go downstairs and check Naomi's door and it's locked. But they're like, is she in there? And is she in there with Whitney? And they're like, Naomi, cough twice if you're in there. And they knock. And Naomi's like, what? 
And Vanita goes, it's only her in there. It's only her in there. So Whitney didn't do the deed or they did the deed and split up. Who knows? I don't even want to think about it. Austin says, last night was explosive. You know, it was an explosive night. You know, it's like me and you, he's talking to Craig. We had our thing and then Shep. And it's like, I just hate how everyone gets. And Craig goes, yeah, it's what happens when you yell at your girlfriend in front of a bunch of people. And I'm like, Craig, are we entirely skipping over the fact that you acted like a maniac last night? We're on two episodes ago. We're talking about the egg toss. That's what happens. I got a maniac. I'm around a lot of people. You acted like a maniac in front of a lot of people. You just didn't have your girlfriend there. That's you had your ex. You act like a maniac in front of your ex. Like, so it's like Craig's like, that's what happens. And Craig goes, Yeah, if you see abuse going on, you're gonna stick up for your girl. And Austin goes, I know I poked Shep, you know, and he he see, you know, he seems, you know, he seems like he's trying to hold it together. And Craig's like, Yeah. I mean, he's trying to get her to quit her job. And Austin's like, yeah, like Britney Spears' dad controlling her life. And I'm like, free Britney. And then Craig goes, free Taylor. Oh, 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 oh. good one, you guys. That's fucking the meanest. And by the way, I'm very thankful that I didn't see any free Taylor memes this week, like the free Britney thing. I one time did a free Britney, um, Britney Cartwright meme. And that was like, I think a year before Britney had gotten released from the conservatorship. And I still regret that meme, you know? And also it, it was when Britney was still on the show. It wouldn't make, you know, but I, I'm so glad nobody did a free Taylor meme. If they did, I didn't see it. So they're all proud of themselves about the Britney Spears comparison. But by the way, if I was Shep, like Shep probably doesn't pay attention to pop culture like we do. But I would be livid about that. That's the that's the thing that would have broken the camel's back for me. I'd been like, you called me Jamie Spears, you motherfucker. I'm going to take you down. Um, and then uh, Austin's like, he's just holding a, the bird too tightly. And then all of a sudden, a bird flies on the window. goes, chirp, chirp. And then Craig's like, that's a bad omen. And Craig says, Shep's spying on us with birds now. We cut to Shep and Taylor in bed that morning. And Shep's like, Everyone thinks I'm bad for you, which is when you wish they had live polling like they do on Watch What Happens Live. Like, do you think Shep's bad for Taylor? Um, and Taylor goes, I know you can only take so much, but watching y'all, I, I just I have to walk away from this. And Shep says, I feel like I'm in the first round of like a video game and it's like I'm, I, I can't get out of the first round. Shep's always trying to do little metaphors and analogies and things that'll like try to like that's he's like look at my brain how it, how it works and Taylor goes set your ego aside and say guys I've I, I'm in, I've admitted that I'm rough around the edges but I want to change or, and control it. I can only say so much and you know they know Taylor goes, they, I can only say so much and they know I defend you. So this has got to be your thing. He's like, I hear you. We, by the way, we see Shep's shaking foot. Shep loves to shake his foot. Uh, no, no joke. Naomi then comes up in the kitchen. And he's like, you guys are cooking. And she's like, I do not feel good. And I was like, ah, oh, did you realize you kissed Whitney last night? And Shep comes down. He's like, Hey, we're making breakfast. And Vinita says, I'm the only one that got a full night's sleep. And Shep goes, well, that was, that was an unfortunate ending for yours truly right here. And Naomi says, you're going to be fine. All good. And Shep says, thank you for your support. So today people are doing golf and then some people are doing shrimping and they're going to eat what they catch. And uh, Taylor comes to the kitchen. Shep kisses her on the cheek. They all sit down to eat breakfast. And Naomi says, anyone watching this right now would think we are normal people, which isn't that how it always is. You know, food brings food. Food is a bonding. Food makes people normal. Olivia says, are you better at golf when you're drunk, Shep? And Shep goes, I mean, I do do better after a couple of drinks. Do you guys know I've said this, but I've never played a round of golf. I've, I've done like the, what is the hitting range? Nick, my buddy Nick used to take me there. I, I did like three times and I really enjoyed it. I even went there once, but I didn't have golf gloves and I burned like a huge, um, I just tore off my skin right here, but it was fun for that moment. That was another thing. I think my like ongoing quest, not even quest because I'm not trying, but I think it's like this insecurity of not being a guy's guy. And like, I'm proud of it in the sense of what I get to talk to you guys about. Like, I'm like, this is my thing. This is our thing. But there is that thing of sometimes I'm like, I just, 
I don't see what guys find cool about doing 16 holes of golf. It seems so boring and so long-winded. I would watch, rather watch a three-part reunion, you know? Um, the girls are going to go shrimping, but Austin and Craig are going to go as well because Austin doesn't want to be around Shep today, who's going to be golfing with Naomi and Whitney. Um, and they're like, where's Whitney? And Naomi goes, Whitney needs his sleep, you know? And I'm like, what does that mean? Because he's fucking old. I mean, he's 57 years old. Like, so I guess, is that what she meant? Uh, we cut to Craig. He's like, I'm a little hungover to be on a rocking boat, but it's okay. I'll rally. If you're saying things like I'll rally in your forties, you know, you're either something's gone terribly wrong or you're on a reality show or it could be both. Austin says, I don't want to be around Shep. You know, I don't hate the guy, but I just need to chill for the day. And Craig says, let's take one of those tandem bikes to drive over to the house. And that's cute because they love each other. Uh, Whitney comes in and Whitney is dressed in this. It's like whoever put his clothes together, he should fire. It, it's like this, this, this puffy half jacket that it's like, what's up fellow kids. <laughs> So they're all getting ready to go. Uh, Shep and Naomi and Whitney getting in the car to go. They blow a kiss to, uh, they, they say, oh, hey, they see Craig and Austin coming tandem in the bike. And Craig blows a kiss to Shep. And Naomi says, man, you and him have been eating a lot of crow lately about Craig and, and Shep. And then Naomi goes, actually, Craig hasn't eaten crow. It's just you. Uh, the girls in Austin are heading to shrimp with Craig. Austin tells Olivia, also, I just wanted to hang out with you today. Shut up. No, you, duh. You're scared of Shep. Um, and Shep goes in the other car, I love Austin, but I am exhausted. So it sounds like they both feel the same way about each other. Naomi says, I can, I can tell, like, I've never seen you um, in this shape, you know? which I'm like, Naomi, you haven't? And Whitney says, hey, I was trying to help you out last night, chef. Naomi says, you know, he, you know, hey, hey, don't, you know, don't fuck. He kind of has that don't fuck with me face on today, Whitney. And chef goes, okay, you can make fun of me. You can resume soon. That's what I'm saying. Like Whitney is like the lead. Like if Whitney wasn't rich, you would never let somebody like Whitney make fun of you. You just wouldn't. No offense, Whitney. It's like, you're gonna, you know, like you just like, no, fuck you. Are you kidding me? But since he's a producer of the show, I feel like they all have to let him make fun of them. It's weird. Do you guys sense that or is that just a me thing? I don't know. Um, we cut to the boat. They pull up and uh, it says, let's go shrimping on the boat. And this is reminded me of Forrest Gump. of like, we went shrimp and you can do shrimp. You can do fried shrimp. You can do boiled shrimp. You can do Cajun shrimp. You know, oh, Forrest Gump. Austin says, okay, it looks like final destination on this boat because it's all rickety and a lot of things that could potentially kill you. We get a quick lesson in shrimping and they're like, okay, we drag this piece of machine at the bottom of the, the, uh, the water here and hopefully we catch shrimp and then we put it up here on the sorting table. Now, if any of you guys are fans of Deadliest Catch, one of my favorite reality shows on Discovery. I mean, it, this is what I'm saying. Like, as you guys get older, you have phases of life. And now most people have normal phases of life where they're like, oh, I was really into hiking or I really got into painting for a while. For me, my phases of life was like, there was like a couple of years where I was really into Deadliest Catch. Like, like there was like 10, 12 years ago. I remember I would go to acting class on Tuesdays and we, I'd get home at like 12 or one. And I was married at the time, but I would like have to watch you know, watch some show. And my, my ex would make me put on, um, I had these headphones that were like connected to the TV. So it wouldn't wake her up. And I would watch deadliest catch. And I was so into it. Like I could even, I would even practice throwing out the line because they would throw out this crab pot line to get the crab pot. And then they would roll it in. And these guys would be up for like 24 to 36 hours. And it would always be the worst conditions. And I was I'll, I'll always be like, I wonder if I could work a crab and boat, but I can't even golf. So I don't, you know, like what are the chances I could crab? And then they would always have like, you know, like that guy's not being a good enough crab fisherman. He's not putting the pots back in the right way. But I'm telling you, there was something so watchable about this show. And I cannot even tell you why I stopped watching it. Even now, like, listen, I'm so excited. Has anybody done the deadliest catch recap show? But I'm telling you, you guys that have watched that latest catch, you know what I'm talking about. It's weirdly exciting because then they set the pots and then they leave the pots and then they come back like days later. And sometimes the, the pots are full of crab and sometimes they're not. 
And then they realize they have to pick up 50 more pots and he set them in the wrong area where there's no crab. So, you know, the next 50 pots are going to be empty and it's so depressing. But then sometimes the captain set them in the right area. His hunch was correct. And they are just, they're, they're doing the count. Like we got 300 crabs, three, zero. And it is just so exciting. I might have to watch an episode of that again at some point. This is why I know I keep bringing up heaven and stuff like that a lot lately, but I just hope. No matter what, even if we're energy, even if we're not in our bodies, I hope we do get to watch TV in heaven because it would be cool to be able to catch up on shows like Deadliest Catch and things like that would just be exciting. I feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like if you could like a lot of people like haven't seen the Godfather trilogy, heaven would be a great place to be able to like, oh, you know what? I'm finally going to do it. Finally going to watch the Godfather. Okay. Back to this, though, Austin's like, oh, man, I, I don't think I've ever done this before, maybe with Chelsea. And we see a flashback of Chelsea. Oh, my God, I used to love Chelsea. I thought she was so smart, so great, so much smarter than the dudes. And uh, we see a little scene of them four years ago. And Craig gets on the boat. He's like, I'm going to do my Titanic. And then Craig, this this is also maybe I don't do the headlock when I first meet Craig. Maybe this is what I do to say, because Craig says, Rose from Titanic is where my distrust of women came from. She said she would never let go. And what did she do? Let go. You guys. How many times have I said this on this podcast? In the course of three years, I've said that same sentiment. At least a baker's dozen. Like at least. Because that's, you know, that's, I, I'll even, I get upset every, and it's not even a joke. I get upset every time I say, how can you say this Leo DiCaprio, this poor little kid from the wrong side of town wins a ticket on this thing, falls in love with this rich girl. This rich girl is getting everything. There's other rich guys after all this shit, you know? And she's like, yeah, he's a cute kid. You know, like, oh, I love you, blah, blah, blah. Let's all, you know, I'm the king of the world. All this bullshit, all this romance, all of this, right? And then the shit hits the fan, right? And they had said they're never going to let go from each other. They love each other. This Leo, this Jack character he plays, he takes the reins, you guys. He's running all around. He's showing her where to go. He's like, we're going to survive this thing. Making sure he, because she's dead weight. You know what I'm saying? She would, she's dead immediately. But this Leo kid, he's like, no, no, we got this. We got this. They wind up, and I know I'm telling you guys stuff you already know, but listen, I just got to get this out. They're on like a, a fucking door, like a big, a big old door. I'm talking the door is bigger than Erica Jane's pool house. And you know what I'm saying? It's like it's a big old door. And this girl is splayed out there, just, just I'm talking like just spread, spread eagle just whatever and she's like oh oh let's try to get you up there uh and she half ass tries and he's like uh uh you know and then he's like no no you you take it like you know and she's like no no but she doesn't really she's like okay cool. like you know she's like okay well that's what you want you know and she fucking falls asleep that's how comfy she is on this door she fall, like in the middle of the ocean, she falls asleep. She's like, that's how comfy this door is. And this kid is just chat, chattering, holding on to the side of this thing. And then finally, he's like, hey, anybody out there? We've got a boat coming to rescue. This Kate Winslet, who's just woken up from like a nice nap, looks very refreshed. Skin looks great. And she's like, oh, Jack. And then looks down. Jack's dead. Like, he's like literally, like he's like just death grip and she's like jack oh and then like kind of like i feel like kind of shoves him a little bit and it's like never let go and we literally watch her let go like my god i mean i am not for you know that thing where like oh let's die together you know but in this case i think if you really did have that kind of special love maybe die together because this kid would have been this kid would have been huge this kid had this kid this kid was a hard worker you know what this jack kid and then we had to see at the beginning of this movie all this shit this lady did throughout her whole life on titanic i know i've said but i'm just so i get so it's like it's yesterday me watching this movie i was so upset because then we see pictures of her like on horse races and all this shit that she got to do because she hogged this door and people argue right and left about this but i'm sorry i lit you know and leo what this jack kid kid so nice. Cause you know me, I'd be like, uh, maybe can we switch off a little bit? Like, is there any way, 
you know, like, could we try again? Like maybe if you scoot it over a little bit, like use your at, like, let's balance this thing. It's huge, you know, and not even, and like, and then to fall asleep on top of it. Like, oh, am I sorry? Oh, is my dying boring you? Is that, is that, is that putting you to sleep? It's, it was so frustrating. And then this old, this old bag, she's like, oh, old. And that's, uh, don't want to spoil Titanic for you guys. She has this heart of the ocean diamond. This whole crew, this whole crew is out in the middle of fucking the ocean trying to find this like billion dollar diamond or whatever. And they're like, uh, you know, and they bring her out like, well, do you remember all the blah, 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 blah. It's like all oh, whatever. This, you know, old lady. And this old lady, all of a sudden, towards the end of the movie, we see that she has had this fucking diamond. She's just like Erica Jane, dude. These fucking diamond earrings. You know, Erica, these diamond earrings. I had them all along. But Erica, Erica definitely would not drop them in the ocean. But this old bag, she's like, never let go. And she drops the diamonds in the ocean. You fucking idiot. Don't you think that maybe Jack being a charitable person and saving your dumb ass would have said, Hey, maybe take that diamond and feed like, you know, a, a third world country, maybe help out, maybe do like a, a, a school for artists named Jack, you know, like what, you know what I'm saying? There's so many things this lady could do with the diamond, but no, I'm just going to throw it in there. She's in there a little nighty. I swear to God, if I was that Bill Paxton character, which I just brought up Bill Paxton the other, right. I would, I would throw this lady overboard. I'd say, go say hi to Jack. Jack misses you. And I go, boom. And I wouldn't throw a door out there for her to like, it was uh, so livid. Anyways, that was a little, de <laughs> just a little detour. Um, so Austin uh, is behind Craig and they're doing the famous Titanic pose. And, uh, you know, Craig's like, why are you grabbing my tits? And then Craig goes, I'm on top of the world. And Craig's like, this captain's going to say that we're clowns. We cut to a beautiful golf course. Shep goes pretty, pretty. And they're like, this is amazing. Shep has a good swing. I think, I don't know. It looked good. I'm not, I don't know golf. And uh, Naomi says, I don't know shit about golf, but I'm not going to go on a boat with Craig all day. Shep coaches Naomi. She hits it. And Naomi's like, oh, Shep's a good coach. We cut to Olivia on the crabbing thing. And she's talking about the fight with Naomi and Craig goes, yeah, all it took was like one thing that she said and it bothered me. And there's just too much there with our relationship. And I'm like, yeah, it's like Austin and Madison. Olivia says, I wouldn't be able to have dinner at a table with my ex, which is also another interesting thing. Cause Olivia, if you said this, then doesn't it mean you kind of understand Austin's point of like, don't invite, like none of my girlfriends will ever be friends with my ex. And Olivia was like, dude, I'm not like, I'll be friendly with whoever. But then Olivia says this line, which kind of cuts that makes that says, I wouldn't be able to have dinner at a table with my ex. So then, you know what it's like for Austin then it's so everybody talks out of their, their ass on this show. And Craig goes, no, I always have a place in my heart for her. But like, I hate her because of the way she would put me down in front of people. And Olivia says, yeah, well, maybe have that conversation with her. And Craig goes, who cares? And Olivia's like, well, you know, last night happens then. And in a talking head, Olivia goes, reel it in, Craig. And Craig goes, it's crazy to go on vacation with my ex. We cut to a golf course. Whitney is good at golf, too. I list anybody that's making it at least six or seven figures seems to be good at golf. And um, so they're like, OK, let's uh, let's get back. It's getting cold. We'll have a nice dinner. Hopefully they caught shrimp and we can feast. Um, they uh, they get the the they get a bunch of shrimp, they get a squid and Vanita and I talking head goes, this is fun. You know, I don't feel like I'm fighting with anyone and it's eye opening. This cannot be the same Craig that Naomi talks about. Like Vanita is finally seeing the, the, uh, the softer side of Craig, you know, and they, uh, they get off the boat and they all shotgun a beer, which is this. I was just like, these guys, man, reality shows really let you keep living that college experience. Uh, and they're like, Vanita, have you ever shotgunned anything? The producer asks in a talking head and she goes, does caviar count? And I'm like, no, Vanita, it doesn't. Um, so in a new scene, 
They, Whitney and Naomi and Shep pull up to the house. It's dark. Everyone starts to get ready. Um, they uh, all split up. Craig and the guys are in our car. Uh, Craig's like, I'm starving. And Whitney and Shep are in the kitchen. And Shep's like, I was pleased to look at you and Naomi's kind of relationship. Like, are you seeing other people? How are you guys leaving it? And Whitney's like, you know, where like, there's not a label. It's like not a rush. Like, Whitney, you don't seem to rush anything, man. Chef says, well, you know, it's the best, best thing, you know, remain friends on a good level. You know, that's why it drives me crazy about Craig and her. And, and Whitney's like, yeah, he like he keeps harping on it. And it's like, Craig's so sweet and sensitive, but then he turns and he's like the mayor of terror town screaming at everyone and just going crazy. And Chef says, yeah, because she dumped him. And Whitney goes, so the ego aspects, you know, I feel bad for her. the car pulls up. Everybody comes in. Taylor hugs Shep and they're like, we got dinner. Austin says, come on, Craig, let's go. 740 p.m. We have a makeup and dress montage. Dun, bah, bah, bah. Shep has a shirt with mushrooms on it. And uh, which I was like, oh, my God, did Shep take mushrooms? Like Shep does strike me as somebody that's definitely done mushrooms on the show. And probably when he's not even announced it, Vanita's in a very pretty dress. She's all dressed up. And Shep says, OK, we need to go get the shrimp over to the chef, uh, the chef, Shep, by the way. He puts a jacket on over the mushroom shirt and he looks like a character out of Dumb and Dumber. Now we go back to Craig and Austin's room. And Austin's getting ready and Craig goes, you're the only person I get ready faster than. Um, then Whitney comes into the other house, hugs Naomi. Uh, and he's like, how are you? How are you? Are you good? He says it creepy. Like, it's like Whitney just says things creepy. No offense. Like Miss Patricia says everything so cool. But Whitney's like, oh, oh, oh. and then Shep uh, calls Austin or Austin Chef calls Austin and goes, hey, we're going to get going down. We got to give the shrimp to the chef. Walk over to the ocean. Meet us there. And Austin says, why are we dressed like we're going to a fox hunt? They're all dressed in sweaters. It must be cold out there, but it's beautiful setting by the, the water. Uh, Craig and Austin get there first, and they order a bullet rye old-fashioned. And Craig orders a really extra dirty kettle one on the rocks. And Taylor walks up with Chef, and he's like, ah, oh, things one and thing two, thing thing one and thing two beat us here. And they talk to one of the staff and Taylor's like, we brought our shrimp. And then Shep goes, you talking about me? I thought you said I was a good height. <laughs> like, you know, trying to make the server laugh, but you know, servers at work. So it's like, okay, sir. Um, they meet the banquet captain and Shep's like, what banquet captain? I've never heard of that. Okay. Oh, captain, my captain. And Shep's in a fun mood. Whitney says, uh, I want to give Shep the credit for tonight. Look at this floral arrangement. Look at this floral display display. And Shep's like, I didn't do this floral display display. I'm more of a mushroom guy. And he points to his shirt and then he goes, you could say I'm a fun guy fungi mushroom amazing drink everybody just loses it they all order drinks and um craig is like what did, uh, he's like craig what did you get and chef says hey craig hey have you ever been in food and bev to craig and we get a flashback of that night did you work in food and bev and somebody says oh my god i'd be relieved if someone said they were pregnant right now because craig's starting to get antsy and Olivia goes, oh, my God, you told them to Austin? And they're like, you're pregnant? And Austin's like, eh. and they're like, just kidding. Eh, eh. Um, drinks are being served. We meet uh, again, D D Davida. She's the banquet captain. Um, Austin, uh, Whitney goes, Austin's like a catcher. He loves balls slapped in his face, which I didn't necessarily understand. Like Whitney, for all the class in the world, will still do like a, a, a good you know, teabag joke, like a good old nut in the face joke. And they're like, Whitney. And he's like, shut the fuck up. He doesn't see that the banquet captain's right there. He's like, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Like Whitney's contains multitudes. Uh, the first course, crab cake paired with a Prosecco. Shep now, you know, like they're, they're all eating and enjoying themselves. And Craig says, uh, do you smell good, Vanita? Is that you? And she's like, I guess it is. And the second course is the shrimp with a strip loin of beef with the shrimp skewers paired with a Cabernet. And Whitney's guys is too well done. He's like, and then he goes to Taylor. He goes, can I have a piece of your pink meat? And he's like, waka waka. And Taylor's like, do you want a piece of my pink meat? And Shep goes, Taylor. And it, you know, weird. And 
chef goes, man, this wine is paired perfectly. And Whitney says, great pairing, great pairing. And Craig says, well, now that I have you all here, let's do a classic trope in any Bravo show. I'm going to throw a party for Sewing Down South's Winter Wonderland party for our anniversary. It'll be a sit-down dinner, cocktail hour, and dancing with a 10-piece band. And they're like, who's your date, Craig? And he was like, I was thinking oh, I was going to I was going to bring my girlfriend as my date, which is Paige DeSorbo. And it was, says, I'm going to bring my girlfriend as my date. And Olivia goes, you mean Austin? <laughs> and Craig goes, you know how much we know about each other. We could be any one of the newlywed game. And then Craig, lo- Craig was like, I know his birthday. I know his address. I know what kind of car he drives. Like, it's like the stupidest shit of like, yeah, I kind of know that too, dude. And Olivia goes, if Craig was a woman, I would be jealous. Naomi says, Craig, what is the mood difference tonight? You, you're so sweet tonight, which, okay. Yeah, he is. But Naomi, don't be the per Like, this to me is like kind of poking the bear a little bit. It's like, don't. Just leave it alone. Just enjoy that he's being nice. This is the kind of shit that everybody, I think, hates of like pointing out behavior. You seem like in a bad mood tonight. Like, that's like, you seem like you're in a good mood tonight. Like, it's so weird. Like, I that never helps anybody when you point out somebody's behavior unless they're insane and then you got to throw up like hit them as well um and craig goes i don't know i blew my load last night i don't know and they're like hey who blew your load (laughs) and Wendy goes okay if we can maintain this craig we love this craig and craig is like yeah I'll, i'll try to stay at the dinner table tonight and chef goes are you going to invite madison to your party craig and he's like yeah I'm not going to, I'm not doing it to fuck with Austin. He doesn't even care anymore. You know, forgiving people is powerful. Craig literally says this. And I'm like, dude, just that it's truly incredible. Naomi says, it's so interesting. You say that Craig, you know, you need to say, Naomi says, it's so interesting that you say that Craig, because you need, you still need to say, I'm sorry. And he's like, I did that at the table. He's like, no, last night you were not civil with me. And Craig goes, great. And Benita says, Naomi, are, are you trying to pick a fight with Craig? Um, you know, just keep, well, she says, in a talking head. Like, just keep your shit together. Enjoy your steak. Have a good time. And Craig says, you're, you know, Craig says something. And Naomi's like, don't say I'm your psycho ex. And don't say I don't exist without you to people. And Craig goes, okay, that probably wasn't nice. He's like, don't, so don't say that I'll work on being kinder. I'm sorry, but at the table, when you told me how to act at a restaurant, Craig says, and Naomi's like, what? I did not do that to you. And Whitney says, Craig, settle down. And Craig goes, why are we even having this talk? Go away. And Naomi says, I have the tools. I've gone to therapy. This does not bother me. And Craig says, at the end of the day, we shouldn't interact too much because you're in my past. And Chef says, okay, okay, let's get rid of the negativity. And Benita says, okay, Naomi, can you at least acknowledge that it bothered him that he got his feelings hurt? And Naomi's like, Benita, what did you say? In a talking head, Olivia goes, you're coming in on Craig's side and you've been her friend for a decade? And Benita goes, I think it would help if you acknowledged his feelings right now. And Naomi goes, Benita, shut up. And then Craig immediately goes, oh, look, the classy girl at the table yelling at people. And then Craig goes, you know what? You're not invited to my party, Naomi. I'm sorry. This is why I don't hang out with you. It brings me to a level that I don't like. You know, you can enjoy your dinner together. I'm going to go back to the villa and I don't want to act like Shep and yell at fucking girls. I just want to go home, which by the way, I love that Shep got thrown through trap. Now Shep's like, I've been in a good mood. I've been nice. And he's like, I don't want to act like Shep and yell at fucking girls. It was like this great, like, oh, damn, he hit me. I wasn't even in this. Craig walks off. Um, Olivia goes, check. Benita says, I'm not saying what you said was wrong, Naomi. And then Naomi's like, what you did, Vanita, was fake as fuck. And Vanita's like, what did I do? You were taking Craig's sides. No, I was saying his feelings were, you didn't have to do that, Vanita. Well, you didn't have to tell me to shut up. Silent stares. We cut to that same scene because we just got back from commercials. You need to shut up. No, 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 no. I have all the class and respect and you talk to me like this. Don't talk to me. 
like that. We're good, to Vanita says to Naomi. In a talking head, she's like, we go back for like 10 years. We played tennis together. I was there with her for Matul. We are friends. I would never talk to anyone like that ever. And of all people to say, shut up to me, how dare you? And then the the captain comes out. It's like, our last course is dessert and it will be paired with a port wine. Chef goes, I love a dessert wine. And Naomi says, Benita, I am so offended by you. Just that, you know, you chose to do what you chose to do. And in a talking head, Naomi goes, I would think she would defend me, but her friendship with Craig, I guess, is more important. I'm good. And Chef says, I'm sorry, Benita. You guys both have a point, but it's an emotional you know, it's a long stand. Like Shep makes no sense, but he's like, "Die, you guys need to be cool together." And so he goes, "That's okay, but I would appreciate you don't know part of this." Like Benita's going, "Hey, okay, I get it, but I would appreciate that." What if Naomi just said, "Hey, you don't know a part of this with Craig," so I would appreciate you don't butt in instead of telling me to shut up. And Shep goes, "You know what? You're right. You know, so let's just forget it, guys." And Austin says, okay, we uh, we almost got to dessert. And Olivia's like, well, we made it longer than last night. And then Austin goes, that's what she said. Oh, yeah. And Chip says, well, okay, I'm going to go look for Craig. Make sure he's okay. I'll bring him some pudding. And Austin says, uh, Shep, I'll go with you. And they're like, oh, bring a glass of port for Craig too. And then Austin's like, how do you not drink the port on the way? <laughs> uh, we get back to Craig's and Craig's in his jammies all, already. And... They're like, hey, try this port. And Craig's like, hmm, it's nice, nice. Don't you love that when you're mad at like, you're like, you get into a fight with friends and then some friends come to check on you and they bring you something and you're like, oh, this is really good. Like you're trying to like, you know, throw attention off the whole temper and all that stuff. But like, wow, damn, this really is good. You're trying to be normal again. <laughs> they give them the uh, dessert and then we cut to the girls. They're all grabbing trulies and they want to sit around and talk. And then he's like, Come sit next to me, Naomi. And Vanita says, I don't want her to think I'm taking Craig's side. I want, I, you know, I, I just wish she would apologize. And we cut to Craig's room. He's like, Naomi, you know, thinks, you know, th this shouldn't be happening at all with me and Naomi. And Austin says, hey, we all have our breaking points and we've seen each other all break, which is like, yeah, that's true too. And Craig says, do I dare ask what happened when I walked away? We cut to the girls. This is like Summer Lovin' from Greece. Tell me more, tell me more. Did you kill Benita? Um, and the girls are like, I was just trying to be the mediator. I wasn't trying to say Craig was 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 more right. You know, his feelings were hurt, and there's nothing wrong with that. And Naomi's like, okay. And they're talking about Naomi goes so much for loyalty, and it's like it's okay if y'all are friends. I thought. Taylor says Taylor didn't really help that. And then we get a shot of Naomi like uh, pissed next time on the season finale of Southern charm. We see miss Patricia, what looks like she's smoking weed out of a glass. Shep says, Taylor, I want to, I want to do, I want to tell you something like he's like, going to like propose you or something. And then Craig goes, Christmas is my favorite. And then we see Olivia and Madison fight at Craig's dinner. And then we see Benita and Naomi fight at Craig's dinner. And then Craig says, Leva, you made it all about you tonight. You know, and she's like, I was talking to your people about your business, not about you. And then Craig goes, I'll have security escort you out or you can just go. Damn, you guys. And that's where we had heard. Remember the rumor that we heard that like that everybody unfollowed Vanita after the season finale? So damn, you guys, but a uh, really good episode. I thought it was really exciting. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, come back tomorrow. We'll have uh, Pink Shade talking about 90 Day Fiance, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. That'll get you pumped up for Wednesday's Beverly Hills. And I hope you are having the best week ever. If you like this show, please support us in any way that you can. I know there's a lot of choices out there for you. So thanks for making me one of yours. Bye, guys. And bye to you YouTubers as well, you guys.